push to be the very best or pushed way too far. Former Gopher athletes have come forward with allegations of tough football practices that ended their careers, and they're not alone. Tonight, WCCO's Liz Collin investigates what happened when a professor blew the whistle. I was teaching history classes. You know, I mean, this is not what I wanted to do. For nearly 20 years, Jason Stahl considered the University of Minnesota his second home, first as a PhD graduate, then as a college professor. Student athletes were regulars in his classes, dozens from the football program alone. Lots of guys coming in, gas, braces, out of nowhere. Athletes who in 2017, Stahl started to watch closely. Guys who had been under previous coaches. And so yeah, things were hard under previous coaches. Not like this. We share a vision of winning the Big Ten West. It was PJ Fleck's first year at the U. The promising young coach known for his boundless energy and charisma on the field. But it was what Stahl says he noticed in class that worried him. Physical and mental health degradation. I saw it in the classroom. It was that physical toll Stahl says he began to track, specifically in Fleck's first recruiting class from 2018. There are five individuals from that class who will never play football again. They are medically retired from the game, all from practice-related injuries. If that happened to your favorite NFL team, would you think that was acceptable? Of course not is the answer. So why do we consider it acceptable for these young men? It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. With scholarship offers from 15 different colleges, Dayton, Ohio's Alex Regelsberger told us he heard from Fleck almost daily before landing at the U. A shoulder injury at practice first sidelined the defensive end six months into his time as a gopher. A year later, the redshirt freshman participated in the first full contact practice of the spring. I was just going to spin down and my neck happened to be like right at the correct angle and I got hit and fractured my C4 and the C3 vertebrae. He spent four days in the hospital. Fortunate doctors told him to not be paralyzed. I did always think it was weird that we would run and do full on like scrimmage style games in the middle of spring when there was no reason to because you're not playing anybody. <laughs> and injuries that are severe like entire ACLs, labrum injuries, neck injuries, concussions. They're things as if you're playing full on games. Two weeks later, it was finalized that he'd never play football again. Medically retiring from the game with his college education still paid for. And you never heard from Coach Fleck after that? No, I haven't heard from Coach Fleck since the day I left his office after retirement. Is it a coincidence all these injuries happen the same way? Months earlier, it was a different injury that Georgia native Nolan Edmonds says sent him on a downward spiral. When I was at practice, it was supposed to be like more of a walkthrough. I got in the ball and I wasn't expecting to contact because we were not supposed to. Hit. But right when I caught the ball, I just had like somebody just come and just hit me from the side and tackle me and my head cocked back and hit the ground. Edmonds got right back up before collapsing on the field. I blacked out and I couldn't remember anything from that time period. He says he felt pressure to get back to practice sooner than he should have. Someone can literally just say something and I can walk away then two, three seconds and forget what they said. Edmund says memory issues and an inability to control his emotions led him to leave the program as a freshman. Again, he says with no real support or communication from the football program, once he left. No call, no text. But it was what they witnessed with another 2018 recruit, Grant Norton, that they say also raised red flags. He had like a rough time. The 6'8", 260-pound tackle from Missouri lasted just weeks at the University of Minnesota in 2018. Norton's throat took a hit in practice. Start throwing up blood. I knew something was like wrong. He started losing weight because he was so anxiety ridden about the practice culture that he was scared to go to practice in the morning and would wake up and start throwing up out of fear. He was here for five, six weeks and he lost 50 pounds. Norton's is the first story Jason Stahl shared online. The college professor made it his mission to find him after he says his former student disappeared from campus. It was horrific, horrific what he went through. Norton told Stahl instead of being kept out of practice, he was pushed harder, punished with planks for not keeping on weight. Norton said he didn't want to be alive at times, so fearful to drop out of football and disappoint his dad. In the end, he said Fleck told him it was time for him to go and that he shouldn't speak poorly about the program after he left.
As a professor, Jason Stahl reported his concerns to athletic director Mark Coyle. Coyle declined their request to be interviewed. So did Coach Fleck. But in a statement, a university spokesperson says Stahl's complaints were thoroughly reviewed and that no findings of any misconduct or rule violation was found. The school went on to say that it would not allow any abusive situation to exist. We need to build something new. Months after his report to Coyle, Stahl was demoted from the position he held at the school. The university denies taking any inappropriate action towards him, but says it can't be more specific due to privacy laws. WCCO reviewed emails that say his position was being eliminated. Stahl resigned, turning to Substack to publish a regular newsletter, publicly rocking the boat, refusing to row it any longer. So if you want the Gophers to win, you should be interested in taking care of these individuals. The U acknowledges nearly half of the players recruited for Flex First Class are gone. Half either transferred, suffered injuries, or quit football altogether. The school says attrition happens. WCCO also found Flex coaching staff has been a bit of a carousel. Half of his position coaches have been with him for the last four years. The others have left. The U says turnover is common in college football. But one coach who didn't want to be identified told WCCO he couldn't back Fleck as a head coach and quit over too much manipulation of the players. As soon as he came in, all of us, including the staff members, would stand up and clap like repeatedly. Some former players share those concerns, along with the use of one particular word. Elite, elite was always the word. If you're asked how you're doing, they say it's the only way you can answer. No matter what. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be elite. It's okay to not feel elite all the time. And it's okay to come forward if there's something wrong with you that you know is not right. These players hope sharing their stories will help to protect others moving forward. All three say they struggled to find mental health help. The U says that's available to them. This university absolutely has a responsibility to take care of its student athletes, especially if you're going to give them the millions and millions of dollars and put millions and millions of dollars forward on a program, you should absolutely be taking care of all student athletes. The players you just heard from did publicly thank Coach Fleck on social media when they left the Gophers. Regelsberger said that so they could still get their education paid for. We reached out to several other college football programs about medical retirements. We heard back from one whose numbers match what we've seen at the U. Their injuries were linked to not just practices, but games. The NCAA told us it does not track football players who quit the sport. Liz Collin, WCCO 4 News. Jason Stahl hopes that some of his research will lead to the first college football players association to better track what players face.